Good morning everyone, it's Jelani, the morning scripture came from 1st Peter chapter 3 verse 14. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the name above all names, even the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Thanking you for another day that you have preserved for us and we pray that our inner man gives you that praise that is worthy of you dear lord and that we're not just saying it with our lips but we are doing so and praising and thanking you in spirit and in truth because as you have taught us that without you there is no life without you there is no hope without you there's nothing because you created all things for your good pleasure so I just pray that you continue to lead us in the knowledge of who you are. Lead us in spirit and in truth while we abide in this world. And this morning specifically, dear Lord, I want to pray for all those who are going through separation, despair, heartache, those who are going through discomfort, depression, those who are going through Ill, um, sickness, those who are going through mental challenges dear lord this um, quieting of the spirit um the hardening of any heart anything that is happening unto us that is uh, destroying us in the sense either mentally physically spiritually emotionally dear lord this morning i just want to pray this morning for the healing of your people and we know ultimately your love is that what heals all things and um you have given us that commandment to love one another and um we just want to pray that this is what we are doing and we are also showing that love of christ throughout any predicament that we face in this world because through your love dear lord we can have hope and have faith have peace everything boils down back to the love of God and we just pray that your love be found in us all the days of this mortal life dear Lord and that we may be givers and showers of your love dear Lord and that we may abundantly and continually receive it uh, because we know that you shall never cease to give, sh give and show us your love so likewise let us receive and show and give out your love as you have taught us lord jesus so the test and trials which these things are boiled on to we just pray that um they do not overcome us that we are always found as faithful servants doing those things that are well pleasing unto you dear lord and even if our flesh is destroyed in the process we know that your or inner man may be preserved by your spirit by your word dear lord by your love and that in the day that you do um come back for those who love you you will be able to even give us that new spiritual body you shall make us perfect before you and incorruptible forevermore that we may abide in your presence forever and ever this is our prayer this morning and i pray that it be not hindered dear lord i pray that we are doing everything that we do and say it is of you and by you through you and for you lord jesus christ so that our prayers be not hindered lead us in spirit and in truth in your word this morning may it edify all of us who hear it and all of us who need it to the glory of god our heavenly father in the name of jesus christ we pray amen all right so first peter chapter 3 verse 14 says oh <laughs> on the wrong page okay but be ye but if ye be suffer sorry but but and if ye suffer for righteousness sake happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror neither be troubled right all right I normally make this comment that the scripture does actually 
speak more to the fact that the believers and followers of Christ shall suffer persecution, shall suffer uh, affliction, shall suffer in general in this world, right? And a lot of the times people don't want to hear that, right? They don't want to hear it. They might be saying, Jelani, why you always want to talk about this suffer, suffer all the minute, every minute you're talking about suffering for Christ's sake? It's not really, uh, uh, to be honest, all I'm doing is um, regurgitating what's read, uh, what's written. Um, I didn't write the Bible. I'm just saying that there's a current, there's a continual um, pattern of this teaching, right? That those who are for Christ shall suffer for Christ's sake. And somebody might ask, why do we need to suffer? To be honest, ideally, nobody wants to suffer. I don't want to suffer. Even in the scripture, it shows you Christ Jesus being our perfect example. When he was going on to the cross, he even prayed to the Father, like, if it be possible, take this cup away from me, but not according to my will, thy will be done. Right? So even this, in that in that time, when he was there sweating like blood, sweating um, drops of blood, right? He was still um, requesting, if it be possible, like, he don't want to go through all of that because it's, the crucifixion was one of if not the most gruesome and gory way to 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 be to die right it wasn't just a swift um gunshot or or swipe of a sword um or dropping of the guillotine it was a process of ensuring that that person suffered as much as possible before they died right and christ he was being transparent there is like if it be possible take it away but if not um thy will be done he shows again that his love for god and being obedient to him far sup um far surpass what man could do unto him he didn't he didn't um buckle under the fact that yes he was going to suffer no he suffered right till the end and he did it because he loved us he loved our heavenly father first and foremost and he loved us he showed the love of the heavenly father to us by what he done right so likewise we know in this world we can pray um, for the Lord to let us not suffer. But if we actually being honest and actually being um, good stewards and followers of Christ, then we know that we always have to revert to the, the fact that we ought to be uh, more than willing to accomplish the will of God through Christ Jesus. Right. And if this in, um, if this. If this means that we are going to suffer for his sake, and this may come in different way, um, different it may take different forms, right? Somebody might suffer by the loss of a loved one. Somebody might suffer by the, the breaking of a heart, right? If we, we go through a relationship and the person decides to leave or something. Somebody might suffer by being beaten for Christ's sake. Somebody might be suffer by being killed. For Christ's sake, it, it can come, it can uh, manifest itself in different ways, shape or form. But the common theme is that the perseverance has to be there. We shouldn't be giving up just because we're going to go through a bit of an affliction for Christ's sake. Notice I always say for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake, because it doesn't make any sense to suffer for doing evil, right? Even the scripture said this: don't no, no, don't suffer for doing evil, right? Because there's no, there's nothing that's going to come out of that that's going to benefit you in any way, shape, or form, right? But if you suffer for Christ's sake, we know that that is beneficial to us because the end of that is that we shall be conformed to His image, right? And He, He's not blind to all of these things that we face in this life and that we are suffering, right? So He knows how to reward those who do these for His sake, right? And we see even. The example of even the apostles. I think one point. This always lets me laugh when I read it. It's in the book of Acts. I don't know where exactly. But at one point when the, uh, the apostles were beaten. Right? The men. Because they were pre the apostles were preaching Christ. And the men. Right? The other guys didn't like it. And they beat them. They put them in prison and beat them. And send them away. And they went off rejoicing the, the apostles. Right? They they that they suffered for Christ's sake. They actually were joyous and happy. And when I read that, I'm like, I'm just picturing it, visualizing like they're getting beaten and they're just looking all happy and joyous. And the people must be like flabbergasted. Like, wow, well, these men must be mad. We're <laughs> beating them and they're, they're rejoicing for this Christ. Why, why are they rejoicing for this Christ? But because they know that it's been done for Christ's sake and Christ already told them that it was going to be so. Right? So... 
I'm going to leave it at that this morning, everyone. Um, any questions, anything that you want to share, you can drop in the comment section or you can send into the word at eachreachone.org. And as much as the Lord has led me, taught me and kept me over the years, I will answer them according to his word, according to his principles, according to his will, being led by his Holy Spirit. So, yeah, have a blessed day, everyone. And God's willing, we'll catch up again tomorrow.